Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Sorry for this delay. It has been an interview, internet issue, but we are glad to be back. Not an interview issue. <laughs> Not an interview <laughs> issue, but an internet issue, yeah. So, we're back. Um, Anna, which game should we look at now? Uh, right now, I see the game between Nana Zagnitza and uh, Olga Gira on, this, uh, on the screen. But as we mentioned a couple of moves ago, it was already clear that White has a huge advantage and uh, very likely White will be able to convert it and uh, win this game. Yes. So maybe we can try to look yeah, at... We can see uh, also, look there. Sorry, Anna, there we see the players. Nana still uh, look... The more or less the same <laughs> posture that she had uh, three hours ago. <laughs> three hours ago, yeah. Maybe she's maybe <laughs> did, did, did she stand up? Yeah, I'm sure mm. she did. But uh, sometimes when you feel that the win is so close, you try to be really very focused until the very end because uh, the loss of concentration, even for a couple of seconds, may uh, lead to some bad consequences. Mm. So it's really actually very important to keep focused until the very end to finish your game and only then to feel relaxed and, yep. uh, and celebrate, let's say. Uh, we have this expression sometimes, or a chess expression, the hardest thing to win is a one game. Yeah. You know this. Or the hardest thing in chess is to win the winning position, yeah? yeah. Because how many examples mm. we know when uh, sure. the position was completely winning, but then uh, we, we let it go, yeah? Sometimes even by losing the game, so my God, when yeah. I remember these moments, it's, uh, let's speak about something positive. <laughs> But uh, many of the top uh, games, uh, or, or many of the games in the in the women's event, are, are still in progress, including to top games. Yeah. Yeah, including the top games. So while in the open section, uh, surprisingly, many of the top games have already been f uh, finished. Uh, so yeah, this just proves fighting spirit of <laughs> of uh, women players. Uh, maybe we can take a look at the game. Uh, of uh, Alexandra Kostenyuk. She's facing uh, uh, Sophie, Sophie Millier. Millier. Somewhere in the opening, we were not so much uh, astonished by her position, but right here, I see that black is clearly better. Uh, bishop per advantage, also the pins over this diagonal and over this file. Uh, so white will be really mm. happy to escape with the draw here, but I believe that uh, black will try to play for a win and well I mean I, I agree with you Anna that uh, yeah sure black is black is doing nicely but but how does black actually make progress if white just sits where she is and you know moves the king around and, and just sort of uh, keeps her pieces where they are rook bishop and knight where they are uh, good questions. I, I think it's not so easy to come with a plan and that's definitely what white will do. White will try to stay and wait because white uh, definitely uh, doesn't have any plan to continue, so uh, maybe the next moves will be just, you know, staying with the bishop mm. or with the king somewhere here, king f2, king g2. Uh, well, black, what can black do? Black can push f5, but uh, what then? Maybe f5 followed by h5 to create a weakness on g4 or to open the position a little bit more. Uh, another idea maybe to bring the king all the way to c6. Uh, is it possible? Well. Or is it too long? How well, do you feel? There might be a knight c7 check or something. Okay, if there is knight c7 check, I bring the king to no, c5. No, no, sorry, knight c7 when you play the king ah, to e8. Knight c7 check, okay, yeah, yeah true. Uh, so maybe to do it in a little bit more wise way, uh, though not clear how. Maybe the idea with f5 and h5 is more realistic. Mm. Also the idea to try to attack the a4 pawn, but how? Uh, if we play something like rook a6, we we are on pinning, and uh, then white's rook get gets more space. Right. Um, I don't really know, hmm. but I think it's good for for Alexandra that after move 40 they got additionally additional 30 minutes, right. so she has time to think, and uh, she has 10 minutes versus 4 minutes for white in this yes. position. Plus 30 seconds, of course. Yeah, and of course uh, she's definitely very happy uh, to have this position considering the position she had out mm. of the opening, so this is a huge progress for uh, Alexandra. Uh, how about this game, the game between Shuvalova and Tsivka? We briefly covered it somewhere in the beginning. Just a little bit, I think. Just a little bit. And here, black is pawn up. Here. Yeah. Opposite color Oppos bishops. Opposite color bishop with what gives additional chances to the side who, who is trying to play for a draw. 
Will White manage to save this? Uh, this well, is this attacked. is attacked. She needs to really keep this pawn, otherwise black C7 pawn will start coming up the board as well. And I think it's quite a big question if she can play some move like that, because let's say I play bishop b6, attacking this pawn, and after that I play b2, and you don't have this king d4 move, that's why oh I actually I played uh, bishop b6. Clever. Yeah. So maybe it's better to, to play bishop e4, but and then some, some idea like that. Uh, but okay, mm, Still. the idea like that is not actually possible because uh, then this bishop can't control both of the pawns. So the king yeah? has to st the king, the king has, has to, to stay there. Stay there, yeah. So unpleasant position for black. The bla then black can come here. Yeah. Well, or clearly also black like has excellent winning chances. Like bishop did to check first to, to ask, okay, where is this king going? <laughs> Please clarify. Yeah, if king the king G4? comes to g4, then uh, king right, e5. Right, king e5. And then where is this bishop going? Mm. <laughs> Do you F3? give this pawn? Uh, no, two? pawn f3. I meant sorry, I meant pawn f3. Pawn f3. Oh, uh, then maybe I can sacrifice. Oh, yes, you can. This, this, and the pawn is fine. Yes, you can. Oh, uh, yeah. Black definitely has uh, very good chances to, to win the first game, and it would be really important to have the first win with the black pieces. Yes. It's always nice. <laughs> uh, what about the other games? Uh, Abdul Malik versus Gary Fulena. Well, we thought that she was in big, big trouble, Shansaya. Um, and now she's still worse. She's a pawn down. But, um, but maybe it's like a dream position <laughs> comparing to what she had. Compared to what she had? It's um, a long way from being uh, lost. Plenty of uh, play left here. So maybe something like Karuk F3. Sure. Pawn down, but she has some activity. The king has to go back. Then maybe activating the rook, trying to, to push. Well, you we have to be careful with C4 because then uh, Rook A3 may come. Right. And uh, the spin will, would be unpleasant, uh, but, but just the idea of that. It's a little bit, as we said before, Shansai, <laughs> whether she's plus three, minus three, that somehow <laughs> something happens. No, and, um, she's, uh, she's mm. fighting very well. She's really fighting very well. And uh, yeah, credits to, to, to Shansai for, uh, for her fighting spirit. Any other results, Anna, that we can just briefly touch on? Uh, maybe on some of the lower, lower boards as well in the, in the women's section, not to forget uh, anyone, really. Um, for example, what's some other draws, yeah? So, um, Vantika drawing with Munguntul Zavatska from Mongolia. Zavatska Yolanta drew Divya Desmuch. Uh, Marwart Kamaldenova drew uh, with Mara Rabidza. Rabidza from Georgia, right. So, um, no, I think we mentioned some of these results yeah. already, yeah. Natalia Poganino beating uh, Ivanka Huska. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier. And I think no new results. Okay. Um, Elizabeth Pets, how's she doing against Tori Daisy Cory? Elizabeth. How is Lizzie doing? Good question. First, I have to find her. Uh, board number 12. Uh, Lizzie is doing very well. She's a piece up and a pawn up, so she, she's, she's, she's definitely dead. She's completely winning. Yeah? She's completely winning. Maybe we can also take a look at the game of Pia Kramlin, yes, against the oldest Salome. participant <laughs> in Salome the women's from section. But she's actually in troubles. Uh, she's a pawn down, and it's the opposite, another opposite colored bishop's endgame. But mm. uh, with the rooks, without the rooks, it would be a draw. Yes. Just a dead draw. But with the rooks on the board, I would say that uh, white's chances are much higher. Well, definitely much higher. Mm. <laughs> also, this pawn is taking falling. Second pawn, that's but right. even if the pawn on h5 uh, was not under attack, I think it's still uh, uh, quite unpleasant to play this position with, wi with black pieces. I think uh, white's chances to win the game, uh, especially when it's like a practical game, mm. uh, are much higher than uh, the chances of uh, black to hold the game. So this would be a very good start for Salome if she can win... Uh this position. Uh, we had a little chat, didn't we, with Nina, uh, who was here a um, short time ago. I think she said that five Georgian 
women are players playing. Players are, uh, are competing here, yeah. Uh, Let me see Salome on the screen. Salome against, against Pia. Pia in check, of course, it's her move. Pia's advantage is that she has 15 minutes on the clock, as far as I can see. And uh, Melia Salome, she's down to one minute, which is, of mm. course, a bit shaky. Yes. That's right, yeah. So we expect, I don't know, King D6, no? King D6 or, or King F7, I don't know. Mm, I don't know, I don't think. Uh, I'm expecting King F7, if uh, I have to answer this question, but, uh, but to be honest, it's a very unpleasant position to play. All right, we can always come back and look at that. Uh, let's take a look at the game of uh, Laura Rogule, the local player for Latvia. I have to say that I played a couple of games with Laura because mm. she's just a few years older than me. So when we were younger, we used to compete at uh, European and World Youth Championships. Okay. And uh, after so many years, <laughs> uh, both of us are still active chess players. And here she is, I uh, know oh she has problems, she has huge problems. Uh, she has the rook and uh, black has two pieces and uh, two pawns, so a huge material advantage for black. And uh, uh, Yulia Osmos explained with black pieces, yes. my compatriot. That's right. Um, and there we see um, the two players that we t uh, we're discussing their position now. Still, um, of course, black... Uh, or to win from this position. But you know, yeah, it's players difficult get to imagine. tired <laughs> and uh, the time starts to get short and... Um, Knight g5 has been played. Knight g5, right. It's quite difficult to imagine something can happen that black doesn't win this game. And right. now we see the plane hall which is actually getting more empty. Yes. <laughs> So the players are ending their games. Whom else do we have? Uh, Olga Badelka facing... Oh, Maria Aitzigeri uh, from Spain. Very young player. How, how is she doing? <laughs> so I believe white is better right. because of this post pawn. But maybe black can hold it as uh, there are not so many pawns on the board. So maybe black can try to trade the pawns on the queen side and then to and sacrifice this knight, knight yes. for, for the h pawn. Well, that would be a fantastic result if she could, uh, if she could draw this game. Yeah, definitely. The very first game. She, um, I think she's one of the players that was given a special place here by Arkady Vorkovic, by the, by the FIDE president. Yeah, after some players withdrew from the tournaments, I think the priority was given to the players who were um, uh, the higher, uh, the next higher rated and also to the juniors. Right. And I think it's a great uh, idea to give some places to the juniors because they were really suffering a lot uh, from the pandemic. They wished to compete, they wished to fight, but uh, uh, they were limited in the opportunities. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, lots of young people here. And um, who did we say the, the two oldest players we think were in the women's? I suppose Pia Kramlin. Pia Kramlin. And, and uh, in the open? Morovic Fernandez, Ivan. Ivan <laughs> Morovic, okay. Here we see Olga Badalka on the screen with the blue shirt. So she feels, she feels qu quite confident. <laughs> G5 played, G takes H5. Sure. Takes, takes. And he takes H5. So as far as I know, Olga is actually a very good positional player. So she definitely understands that her position is better. The only question is uh, if she will win this game or not. What should black play here, Anna, do you think? Bring the king across? Um, anyway, she can't stop H6. Or maybe she should get her knight to g5. Knight to um, g5, so that to stop the pawn before it crosses. Before it crosses, yeah. So knight h3 now, maybe. Uh, knight h3, and then the idea to and bring the knight. Back I thought that maybe it's more important to bring the king to the center, like king d6 followed by king e5. Uh, 
Mm. Uh, but uh, the night end games, they should actually be calculated very carefully, so we can't just, you know, on general means, of course, it's better to stop the pawn when it's on h6 rather than when it's on h7. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have to be careful because then now the king can go this oh, direction and also mm. this direction. Uh, so I'm not sure what is actually better. It's um, it's tough, isn't it, for for Black Archie to defend? Uh, the idea I mentioned was that uh, right here we go king d6, try to play king e5, or maybe we actually have to run very fast uh, with uh, yeah, the king e7, try to win this pawn, and then right, run and then run back the with other. the king. So mm. it's another idea how to do that. But then king e3, say? King e3, and now the question where to move the knight. I don't yeah. have the answer <laughs> to this question. <laughs> because wherever we play the knight, Can it's still too F7? far. King f7. King f7. h6. Mm. And then the king goes this direction. Yes, yes, yeah. Very unpleasant endgame. And, and also Marie is down to two minutes. That's true, yes, down to two minutes. Um, okay, maybe now let's cover some games from the open section. Of course, uh, many of the top boards have already ended their games, but still, still we have, uh, here we have Jeffrey Sean facing Zhou Jinxiao. All right, we didn't look at this game, did we? I so think far, we I don't think so. No, we haven't looked at this game. Seems like white is better because of the better bishop. And the knight on d5 is very strong. And the last move was knight to g7. The idea is maybe to bring the knight to f6 to trade this knight. Mm. And then take into consideration that uh, the pawn structure is completely blocked. Uh, this bishop can't actually prevail <laughs> over that bishop, yeah, because. Of course, this bishop is much nicer, but uh, but then it's. Uh, I think we're heading for draw here, don't you? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Seems so. Seems so. I would, I would say, yeah. Okay. So, um, as we've said uh, already a few times, that the open time control is longer. Um, than in the women's event. Yeah, that's why we can see that uh, the Chinese players st uh, still have 31 minutes on the clock, while uh, Jeff Rishon has almost 30 minutes on the clock. And wh when taking a look at the women's games, we see that the players mm. are all in the time trouble, yeah, yeah. on the second time trouble. What you, what, what actually, if I can ask you, what do you think about that, about having different time controls between the open and the women's events here? Is that something you've seen before? Um, I can't recall any other tournament where uh, the open section was played at the same time as women's section and there were different time controls for both of the sections. So that's a little bit unusual. Mm. Uh, but I think it's uh, because of the um, control which is used for the world championship matches and uh, mm, open in the open section and in the women's section they are different. There we so are, we're seeing now on the Oshiku, you're seeing the... Um, the time control uh, for the women, so they just have one time uh, at move 40 and then 30 minutes for the rest of the game with, of course, the increment. Whereas the men have a control at move 60, don't they? Yeah, in the mm. open section, it's like 100 minutes for the first uh, 40 moves, then additional 50 minutes for the next 20 moves, then additional 15 minutes for the rest of the game. Right. Uh, and also like 30 seconds increment for starting from move one. So it's actually much longer. I mean, for example, Anna at Olympiads, as far as I know, the time controls are, are the same, no, between the... Did you know that or not? I may be mistaken, but as far as I understand uh, mm. the time control, as far as I remember, yeah, they were the same. I, I don't know why. So there we see um, Jeffrey Zhang. Jeffrey Zhang. In Jean. this very sort of blocked, closed position still. Uh, it looks... Visually, it looks nice for white, but... <laughs> What 
Well, in order to play what for the win, do? you have to keep the knights on the board. Yes. But then uh, we also have to be careful that we are not suddenly checkmated. checkmated. <laughs> <laughs> because that would be even worse. Uh, so the idea may be to bring the knight to f5. But if black just stays put, black just... Uh, but if, yeah, but then black may change. Black doesn't... Uh, it's plan. And uh, just keep the knight on g7, not necessarily mm. bring it to e8 and f6. No, I still think this will probably be, uh, be a draw. Now, there's another game here um, we haven't seen, I don't think. Yes, exactly. Jordan uh, Van Forist. <laughs> One of the brothers in this big family yes, where that's everybody right. plays, yes. Uh, I think this the, the, the other brother, Lucas, is also here as he was given one of the final places because some other players didn't take up their place, correct? Yeah, true. For Lucas. So Lucas is older and... Uh, or not, no. Maybe I'm mistaken. Jordan, of course, won the Tata Steel event in 2021. Impressive Fantastic result. Fantastic achievement. result Absolute, by Jordan uh, White Forest. Absolutely magnificent. So... Um, yeah, look at his rating, 2691. <laughs> Wonderful. And how old is he, do you know? I don't know how old he is now. But, but Nearly 20. Oh, no, I was going to say early 20s, but <laughs> maybe not even 20. Yeah. So he, he, here he's playing with black pieces and the uh, material is equal. Uh, no, white is blown up. My, my calculation <laughs> is not that good. There um, we are. We see them... Uh, I think Lucas is actually the reigning Dutch champion for, uh, since the event was last held. Um, beating his brother, I, I believe, uh, in, uh, in a tiebreak. So, um, anyway, so both brothers are here. Rook 6 was played. I am expecting King to F5. Is there any other move we can consider? I think that if we allow something like rook f6, it would be lost because then uh, these two connected pawns will just decide the game. So king f5. Right. Okay, he's taking his time. Maybe there is something besides king to f5. Okay, there is rook b4, yeah? Attacking both of these pawns, but yes. I think that this pawn is much more important than, than still, any as, of as these. As you say, if rook b4, rook f6 maybe, and then f4. Mm -hmm. What other is maybe king to f4? But okay, if we are deciding between these two moves, then king to f5 is uh, also attacking the rook on e6. Mm. Somehow we can see that. So white has uh, real chances here, yeah? Yeah, it's definitely that white is playing for the win. But I am just uh, wondering why Jordan is thinking so long, mm. he spends quite a lot of time to get the decision, so maybe maybe there is some other move. Okay. No? <laughs> well, he has Any 45 suggestions? minutes. He has lots of time on his cognizant, 45 minutes. Still. Looking at his face, it mm. seems like he's not completely sure if he will manage to hold this. I guess it must be rook b4, the only other move that makes sense. Uh, King f4 looks a bit strange. Okay, which other games are still in progress? Uh, here we see the game between Boris Gelfand and Dmitry Colors. Uh, mm, black Boris is two uh, pawns up, yeah. so, uh, well, this uh, should be winning. Nice to see From Boris here. Yeah? Nice to, see, ni nice to see Boris in action, but uh, not that nice to see that he's two pawns down. Mm. And uh, it would be really very difficult to save this. Yeah. Uh, what about this game? Nord back Yakuboya versus Rauf Mamedov. Uh, should be technically winning for white. Right. But uh, I believe Black has more chances here than in the previous in game the we right. saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On our screens we're seeing... Um, Dmitry Kolars. Dmitry Kolars, a uh, young German player, uh, playing against Boris Gelfand. Uh, what about this game? That's wow. actually very interesting because it's this. the game between two Indian players. Mm. 
Adiban versus Saturaman. I believe uh, these two know each other very well. I'm sure they. I'm sure they, <laughs> I'm sure they know each other very well. <laughs> oh, white is pressing again. White has a better bishop, but uh, all but the pawn structure is blocked. Is. So yeah, no way, uh, no way any of the sides can break through. Okay, sometimes there are some ideas with this breakthrough yes. on g4, but this is the only idea in this g4 position. g4 and then, then h takes h5 or something like this. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a real. Uh, it's a real opportunity to play g4. Uh, though even if uh, 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 actually it's still it's black to move right now, so let's say uh, rook to e8, and then just imagine like this, and what next? To bring the king here, but mm. that may turn out to be dangerous <laughs> for white, yeah? So you start playing for a win, and then nobody yeah, knows true. what happens. Mm. Well... Because of rook h8, you mean when the king gets to h4? Is that the problem? Yeah, there is also an update that both Adivan and Seturaman come from Chennai, the city where yes. Anand lives. Vichy. Mm. Vichy. Yeah, so, so they definitely know each other very well, I'm sure. They even Demiotic. try to help each other or uh, having some training camps together. So we can see uh, the, the emblem on. Um, on his jacket there, look. Almost all the Indian players are supported by some companies, and mm, I think I it's so. wonderful that uh, so. India is paying attention to chess mm. and that uh, Indian players are supported because it's really very important, especially for the young players, to get some support, to be able to go to the tournaments abroad and uh, to perform, to, yeah. to compete with stronger players. I think here in the Open, I think they are the second federation after Russia in terms of numbers, numbers of players, I believe. Uh, um, yes, indeed. There are 22 players from Russia, 10 from India, and 9 from Ukraine. So mm. they have a really huge delegation. But I remember that uh, when we played World Cup in Russia, they had so many players coming from India. There were mm. players, coaches, mm. parents, mm. <laughs> supporters. Sure. Uh, so it was great Doctors. to see all of them. <laughs> I, d I don't know, but seeing all of them like bringing such a huge delegation from India, uh, that was that was wonderful. Have yeah. you played chess in India? Yeah, a few times, yeah? Uh, no, never. Never? Uh, they used to organize, to, to organize uh, World Junior Championships. Yes. Uh, also for girls. But uh, I was too young back then, and then when I grew older, uh, I think uh, somehow India stopped organizing uh, these championships. So I have never been in India, but I, I would like to. I played chess in Chennai once, actually. I was there, I visited, and I played a tournament <laughs> many, many, many years ago. Many Wonderful. years ago. So we have uh, Pete. Pete Doggers is uh, going to show us uh, something now. And so, uh, Pete, over to you. Yeah, I'm back here uh, in the studio as well um, as I did once <laughs> earlier in this round, actually. Uh, I will be here a couple of times a day during this tournament. Uh, and whenever, basically whenever I see a, a few nice moments, uh, usually tactically, uh, I will show them. Um, and uh, I found two uh, quite pretty ones. Uh, first, we have the uh, game uh, between Mateusz Bartel from Poland and with black Yevgeny Nayer uh, from Russia. Um, it doesn't look like uh, there's much going on in this, uh, this endgame, actually, but after d5, trade, trade, knight e5, black seems to be in time to, uh, to play a7, a6 next, for example. Uh, because the bishop uh, on c4 needs to, uh, to leave, right? Well, no, Bartel says, I'm, I am taking that pawn. And of course, the idea becomes clear. There is both a pin over the b-file and there is a 4 coming up because of that pin. So for example, if black would take knight on c6, uh, attacks both rooks, and then you might think, but what if I just remove my bishop, then I'm having two minor pieces for the rook, right? Yes, but I'm taking the one on d8, and then pawn b7 drops as well, and the a pawn turns out to be too strong. So this is also, uh, well, virtually winning uh, for white. So in the game, 
Nayer decided to take his chances with Im immediate bishop f5. But after bishop b3, white had won that pawn. And in fact, after knight d7, the move came anyway. <laughs> because now, after takes, takes, white threatens c7, winning an exchange. And, and therefore, one of the rooks needs to go. White wins the piece back. And the end game uh, with an extra pawn uh, is actually still underway. There is now, they're now in this rook end game, and uh, white should still be uh, having excellent winning chances. So knight, knight takes a7 was a very nice shot. And the other tactic I found was a game that is already over. Um, Nino Baciashvili from Georgia uh, won quite nicely um, in her uh, her white game today. Uh, against Monika Sochko from uh, Poland. Black just played h5, threatening h4, and seems to be developing quite a nice uh, initiative on the king side, but but Shashvili just developed her bishop, and that must have uh, taken quite a bit of calculation, because the idea after h4 was this stunning move, bishop takes e5, attacking three pieces at the same time, so black needs to take. There comes a check on d8, king h7. The pawn goes with check. Black goes back of the king, of course. Uh, it doesn't make sense to keep keep trying to keep the material uh, with knight h5 because there will be rook g5. But isn't this just a draw then, Black might have thought? No, here comes the actual point of the combination. Rook e3. And now the black queen lacks squares to protect the, the, the rook on c7. We're quite uh, difficult to, to foresee that in, the future, in, uh, in advance so, so far. And black tried knight e2 to, to at least keep the rook. But um, white was consolidating and actually mating just a few moves later, and here black resigned. So there you go. Two nice tactics uh, during this round. I will surely uh, include them as well in my news report on uh, chess.com, which will be published uh, later uh, today. And uh, for now, uh, the show is going on a quick break and we'll be right back after.
Well, welcome back, Anna. And uh, how have you been enjoying the chess so far? It's great. It's great, great to be yeah? here. And the games uh, which we have covered, they are uh, really very interesting. So uh, many of the games have already been finished, but still we have uh, some players in progress even on the top boards in the female competition. Uh, this is the game between Sophie Melea and Alexandra Kostenyuk. Alexandra is trying to win this game sure. and uh, she's actually making some progress. Look at this rook e1. Uh, I think the next one will be rook h1 and uh, rook h3. So it's very inconvenient to play this with white pieces. Actually, not. <laughs> Actually, she played the rook five. Actually, she played rook five <laughs> <laughs> instead of rook h1. So maybe first she wants to take this pawn on g5, and then um both um, both players are down to well, really not much time at all. Um, Sophie, uh, twenty seconds. As we're looking now, she gets thirty seconds increments uh, per move, but she has to be quick. She has to make a move. King c3. She made the move only when she was down to four seconds. King c3 was played. And uh, Alexandra just with uh, minutes and 40 seconds or so. We have to mention that Alexandra Kostanyuk became the winner of the World Cup, so she's already qualified to the candidates. That's right. Yeah. Still, she decided to participate here and uh, and compete in a strong event, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's, she's, she's a bit puzzled, like, what to do. Her rook takes, uh, rook takes g5. Uh, that was her intention. So uh, it's funny, actually, um, Anna, because I was saying before, when, when we were talking about this game, how white, if white just kept her pieces where they were rook, knight, and bishop on the same squares, <laughs> what kind of plan <laughs> Alexandra could find to create winning chances? And in fact, the pieces are still on the same positions, you know? <laughs> Uh, Those three pieces. Actually, she moved the bishop from e6 to c6. I think she regrouped that. And right. if you remember, I suggested the plan that maybe black might uh, bring the king from g7 to the c file, but it was white who came with the king <laughs> all the well, way from the f file look. to the c file. Coming to f5. Uh, here on the screen, we see that Olga Badalko won her game. Right. Uh, this was the knight end game with the yes. h passed pawn. Against um, the young Spanish player there, who certainly put up a good fight, Maria Itzigeri Flores. True, good fight from the Spanish player. I met her, her mother. Did I mention her mother was at the hotel? I had a little chat with her mum uh, last night with Maria's <laughs> mum. She's here with her mum. Good. Uh, is her mum uh, her coach? Or I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, so. think so. So good start for Olga Badelka. Uh, how many games are still in progress in the women's section? I think only two, only two. This is one of them, the game right. between Alexander Kostanyuk and Sophie Melia. And another one is Pia Kramlin. Oh, uh, this game, yes. Yeah, so uh, Melia Saloma with white pieces and Pia Kramlin Pia with two points down. Uh, and this really must be um, a technical win for Salome. Yeah, very, very difficult position. The pawn is already on 8-6. Yes. Okay, let's come back to the open the section. Open, where well, there will certainly be some uh, games still going on. There are more games in progress. Here we see Alan Pichot versus Vladislav Artemiev. Uh, Vladislav is a piece up, uh, though it's not that very easy to convert, I think. Of course, he's playing for the win, but it's not that easy to win this position, I think. Because there are not so many pawns left. Also, right. when Black tries to regroup this knight, then uh, the king will attack the f4 pawn. Correct. Uh, so uh, black has to be precise. Maybe something like rook f5 can come, followed by king g5, improving the, king the position of the pieces. Get the king a bit closer to the pass pawn. Yes. d6 is not possible, so before moving the to d6, so white has to put this rook to Move some rook. other. Horizontal, maybe like uh, rook a6 or rook, uh, sorry, rook a8. But you're right, there's only two black only has two points left. It's um, maybe not that simple to, to win this position. Uh, yeah, uh, this game. Oh, yes, no, this <laughs> still going on. <laughs> this game will never 
That's, well, uh, that's the right. game we were just looking at. That's uh, Altemiev against Pichot. And this one, Anna, I don't know what you think, but I, I, I just see this as having one result. <laughs> <laughs> this having one result. So uh, maybe the repetition, like knight e8, knight e3, knight e7 back. Too blocked. Yeah. It's uh, it's certainly very very blocked indeed. Yeah. And I just don't see what I can how I can uh, create serious uh, threats. Oh, let's take a look at what uh, Jordan has decided. Did he play king to f5? Mm. Actually not. He played rook to c3. Okay. So right. He decided that the c4 pawn is the priority. Did white play rook, rook f6? Rook f6 was played. Right. Yeah, the move that I suggested. And rook c4, king f3. King uh, f3, not f4 check. f4, was it possible if we take? I uh, know. Yeah, f4 was possible, but maybe then king g4, maybe king g4 followed by rook c2. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe white wanted to bring the king first to e3 and then to push f4. Right, because then be the king is the both supporting the f4 pawn and also the king is not cut and the yes. king is very close to stop the c pawns. So that was uh, that was very logical. Rook a4, king e3, and now it's black to move. Uh, white is a pawn down, but it's definitely white who is trying to win this game. Mm. Oh yeah, no question. Yeah, no question. Um, maybe maybe uh, black can survive there. Not sure. Give some checks. Just check, yeah. If the king goes here, one more check. So the king can't go uh, this way. Maybe king e4 and then king d3. King d3. But then f4. Uh, check, yeah. That's what oh, he did. Oh, this may be happening now. King e4, one more check. Just keep checking. And after king d3? King d3 Let's has see. been played. Which has been played, yeah. Right. Maybe now something like rook d4 and then start pushing this pawn? Yes. Is it possible? Well, it's definitely possible. <laughs> possible <it is laughs> According right. to the chess rules, it's possible, but I mean, how good and is Even it? logical. Even logical. I would say. Let's see if we see this on the board. Now Jordan is taking his time. What is down to three minutes? Could we also quickly have a look, please, Anna, at uh, Sargissian against Pragnananda? I don't think we looked at that game. Well, if, if we did, I, I forgot. Just uh, I think it's ball 27. No, I think you haven't did checked this, this game at all. But Pragnananda, a young Indian talent. Another, that's right. So rook c6, is it possible to take on h5? I, uh, it's definitely possible, but then uh, white will take this pawn. Yeah, with, uh, with a draw, I guess. And even if there are some mating ideas, yeah, we are mm. not running into the mate because we have a rook g5 check. Yeah. So this seems like a draw. Looks like a level game, yes. Agreed. Okay. Uh, who else? Any updates in this game? Oh, he's played g4. No, Anna. no, 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 it was our oh, that was your analysis, analysis board. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he played Getting king to f2. <laughs> <laughs> so rook e8, king to f2. <laughs> and yeah, not so many things are happening here. Uh, in this game... This game we thought should be... Um, should be winning for white. Technical win for white, really. Here, uh, Boris Gelfand uh, will try to fight for a draw. But uh, it doesn't look very uh, likely, does it? Uh, what about the other games? David Howell. Yes, I am David sure you know him very well. I know David very well, yeah. Um, he has a great position yeah, here. Great. This pawn is strong. Look also, at that pawn the H2. king wow. can be attacked. The queen on a1 quite and a queen on a8. Yeah, quite it's a strange not position. <laughs> eh? it's, not <laughs> it's not what we see in every game. <laughs> There are maybe the idea like to sacrifice this pawn and then to play uh, rook h2, yeah? Trying to go for a checkmate. Right, yes. Nice idea. 
That could even work, yeah. Just and it's black to move. So here I expect... Oh, he did it. He did it. Okay. So is it winning by force? Okay, white has to take. That's... All right, rook h2. That's not a question. And uh, I'm expecting a rook h2. It looks rook terribly strong indeed, yeah. Must yeah, take. Must. I think this is game over. No? Okay, if the king comes to c1, we have bishop f4, so... If king comes to d1, I mean after the trade, uh, after then trade, there yeah. is uh, rook b2, there, mm. there are many things. Uh, so it's completely hopeless for white. So it should be... Uh, no, it should be a straightforward win uh, for, so white for David. Yeah, though I... Oh, he's resigned. There we are. We can see, yeah. look. Oh, well done, David. Good start for David, who has just won his game with black pieces. Yeah. And uh, Velimir Ivic, a young player from Serbia, mm. who actually performed very well at the World Cup. I think he managed he to come to round four, which was a big success for him. Well, David will be very happy to, uh, and, you know, to win with black. <laughs> I think he's al uh, also very happy to be at the tournament because he used to commentate on many events, many online events, but now right. he's actually, uh, he has the chance to, to play the game. And recently I saw one of his stories where he said that he played his first over the board game uh, in the last more than a year. Really? <laughs> so, yeah. so he must be really happy to be here and, uh, and to play chess. In fact, um, two years ago, Anna, in, at the Isle of Man, I think going into the last round, David had a big chance of, uh, mm -hmm. of qualifying uh, for did the he candidates. Did he play on the top board? Uh, did he not? Uh, maybe he played Wang Ha in the last round. I'm not sure. Yeah, and he lost, I think. And he so lost, yeah. But so um, after he that, was Wang he had a great event. And mm -hmm. he, so but he played with black pieces, so it wasn't so easy. But still, to be in that position, one, one round away from a possible <laughs> candidate's <laughs> place. Uh, Maybe this is his uh, tournament as well. Maybe. Uh okay, it's just the beginning. The I know, first it's just round. beginning. Let's <laughs> wish <laughs> David good luck and all the best. Also for Valimir, uh, once again, it's just the beginning and it's many only one things game, can course. change. So That's right. Uh, That's right. we wish all the players all the best and uh, have a nice tournament. Nanda Dagnitze has posted a win uh, in her game against. Uh, did we mention that? Against Olga? Oh, uh, yeah, we were expecting Nana to win. So it was this queen end game where she was a pawn up, and uh, now, yeah, queen c2 will be met by queen c4. Alexander is still playing. Still playing. Oh, oh look at this. Oh, but now Goodness it's totally me. winning, yeah. Nothing yeah. can stop this pawn. Wow, so what happened here, Anna? How did the position change? Uh, so we saw... The last one we saw was rook to g5. Yes. Knight e3. Now check. Yeah, but uh, having less than one minute, it's very difficult to, to defend it. Bishop G2. Couldn't she come back to D3? But then, but then Bishop G3, I guess. Mm. Knight of five. Yeah. Maybe that was more stubborn. Uh, though once again, it's it's really very difficult to hold that. So she played King to C3, but well, after giving the H3 pawn, it's completely hopeless. Right. And we can see Alexandra won her game. Good start for Alexandra. Yes. And, uh, well, Sophie, it was a tough game, huh? It was, uh, and she, I think we thought that she stood quite well uh, after Ale the opening. Yeah, Alexandra was really struggling uh, out after the opening, but then somehow the tables turned and she managed to get a better position and then she managed to win this end game, which was actually quite difficult to win. But it was. But in the second time trouble, she she was better than her opponent. Yeah, that's right. So it's almost like all the games have been finished in the, uh, in the women's, women's uh, events, section. Yeah. Uh, let's just take a look. Yeah, everybody has finished. Pia probably lost. I can't find her. Yeah, she, she lost did lose the game. So we have we have all the games finished in the uh, women's section, and uh, so the, Geor the Georgians have done well today. No, 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 I don't know how um, Leila did, or Mary, but uh, certainly three out of three for the others. I can quickly check it here. Georgian day, yeah? Well, those three games were all one. Uh, 
Uh, a Lella one. Lella one as well, <laughs> four out of four. Lella one and, mm. uh, and Mary. Somebody and Mary Drew was black. Somebody was telling me, was it you uh, telling me about this, this documentary about the Georgian, uh, Georgian ladies chess players? It was definitely not me. It wasn't you. <laughs> no, somebody was telling me yesterday about a documentary. Um, is I it Anna. Or It's is out it in the cin Anna Srebrenic, the deputy chief arbiter, she was telling me over dinner. A very interesting, nicely made um, documentary about four of the leading Georgian women, uh, Nona, Maya, and so on. I think I saw the trailer. You saw the trailer. And yes. I think she saw it at the cinema, actually. I think it's uh, something with Queen, I forget now. Um, four queens or something connected to that? Well, it wasn't four queens, but um, I don't think. But uh, anyway, so um, so four out of four. And did, did you say five out of five? Uh, no, Mary. Mary, <laughs> Mary made a draw. She made a draw. Four and a half out of five. Not bad. So um, I guess we're coming to the end of the first day's show, Anna. Lene. We can start to think about wrapping up a bit. Um, a few games still going on in the open section. So I will just open But we won't be staying uh, here and to watch them all, I mean. Okay, here we don't have any updates, but we are expecting a draw in this game. We, uh, would you say there were any big surprises today, Anna, um, in the open event, for example? Did we see any? Not really. Uh, we saw quite many games ended in a draw. And uh, I don't think there were some like big surprises. But once again, it's very difficult to consider su any of the result. Yeah, yeah, then like we see the results on the screen now. The top, the top boards there. Uh, many draws, as, as you were saying, Anna. And three white wins for Fabiano, for Alireza Firuja, and for Kirill against Kirill, <laughs> for Alexinko. Um, and I'm just yeah. wondering why Kirill Shevchenko is uh, under the Russian flag because uh, he's actually the Ukrainian player. Maybe uh, it can be changed later. The women results there. So uh, Maria having a draw today. And wins for Nana, uh, Alexandra, Paulina. So the favorites, really. Yeah, but in the women's section, we see many decisive results we comparing, do. We do, <laughs> comparing yeah. to the open section. The only really result against the um, ratings there would be uh, Anna's Anna Sargisian's win over Alina Kaslinskaya. I agree. Yeah, among the top balls. But uh, yeah, certainly fewer draws, many, many fewer draws, as far as we could see amongst the, um, the ladies. And some tough endings still in play in the open. And uh, people can still watch those games, of course. We'll be um, back tomorrow. So um, just remind viewers of, well, that there are three candidates' places at stake here, Anna. Two in the open section. And, and one, one in the women's section. One in the women's section, yeah. 11 rounds, 10 rounds still to come. So all the rounds start at the same time. It's 2 p.m. local time, what is uh, 1 p.m. Central European time, and 4 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, there is a day off on November 2, after round 6. And uh, we will be glad to, to see you tomorrow, yeah? Absolutely. Same time. <laughs> same time, yes, same today. place. Same place. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, good night, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.